Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. In this episode I hope to get this Paris launcher underway and get a Kerbal over on a lunar flyby and recover that Kerbal safely. We do have to fix the avionics situation, so that's important. But uh, I have gotten no advice about how to fix the shaking to pieces problem on the launch pad, which is sort of more important in a way. I have heard that Bob Fitch has had a similar problem, and I used to have this problem too. Um, but I'm not too sure how to actually stop it. It's possible I'll just move the launch... They're pretty high up actually for a regular RO rocket. So it's a little bit unusual altogether. It does seem like a straight up glitch. Now, as far as the capsule is concerned, I still sense from the comments that people are not, not reconciled to this sort of design. I have to point out that Mercury and Gemini both had a thing on top with the RCS, the control systems, and the parachutes. Uh, that's just how they were. Um, uh, this is not an unusual design feature, and um, if this was unanticipated by the people who wrote the configuration for the capsule, well, that's their own fault. <laughs> I mean, because because this is uh, if this is anything like a Mercury capsule, which I presume it should be. The idea that I would put the RCS and parachutes on top should not have come as a surprise. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's my general policy on that. And, you know, if, if I do something that they didn't expect, well, uh, maybe part of the responsibility is on my part, but, you know, that's what Kerbal is all about. I mean, if we all use the parts exactly the way people expected, uh, then we really don't need to be playing the game at all, right? I mean, it's just everybody knows exactly how to build the thing and build it exactly how it was meant to be built, then there's no fun, right? The fun comes in innovating somehow. This is not a particularly special innovation, mind you. Like I said, this is actually how it's often done. The, the, admittedly, the RCS ports are not supposed to be full way. I probably should be using um, stuff like uh, these little suckers. So those are probably more in line with what I should be using. Technically, this capsule already has some RCS built in, in the form of the high-test peroxide, the HTP down here, and it has RCS ports of its own. But uh, the problem is I needed a few just in case we skip out of the atmosphere to fix our orientation and to fix our periapsis to make sure that we don't have too steep a periapsis. Uh, also, when we let go of the service module that we don't have too steep a periapsis or, you know, our orientation is completely off in some way. So, yeah, those were key things that were important to get right. Uh, some people know it well, it's supposed to be able to orient itself without the RCS. Yes, it's supposed to, but um, there are a couple of complicating factors about that. First of all, this pod is obviously, this configuration for this pod is obviously not configured for lunar fl return missions. So we're going to have a little bit of a problem with the velocity that we're coming in at. And uh, it's not tested for that. So I'm using it for a purpose that it wasn't meant for. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that just because it's supposed to be able to do that in real life doesn't mean that we've got to finally tuned in realism overhaul. And you can uh, try flying any of the space shuttle replicas that have realism overhaul configurations and see how well they do on re-entry and the point is that well sometimes things don't go quite right and the configuration still needs some tweaking and this whole matter of putting this pod on this heat shield I don't know if that's something that was uh, anticipated or whether this is what I'm supposed to be doing or not or I can't read the minds of the people who wrote the configurations is my point so Given that, the only way to figure it out is to do some testing. And I have incrementally adjusted my, my whole system in order, to, in order to compensate for some of the expectations that they had. But I still want it to sort of be my system. Uh, not just, and you know, I'm, I'm actually copying Mercury and Gemini like I said, but I still want it to be sort of distinctive and not a complete complete replica or exactly in line with the expectations of the people who write the configuration so there is, it is a complicated interplay of imagination here and you'll have to forgive me for that 
Now, in the previous rockets, we solved our avionics problems by having extra avionics on the boosters. We don't have boosters this time, so that's a little bit of a drawback. So we have to put all the avionics in the center section and lift it up with it. So it looks like we need another... 45 should do it. Well, that's, that's small. Alright, and are we clear? 700, uh, 799 tons. Um, Delta V-wise, we're a little bit less, but I think we had good margin before. Yeah, so I think we're okay. Okay, I, I'm just having them be single shoots. Yeah, I go to pressure, pre-deployment, standard stuff, apply. Obviously, it can't carry the whole rocket. Okay. Oh, uh, do I have action groups that, those parachutes? Got the fuel cell. So panels, commutron, so panels, commutron. Okay, so the arm parachute is on six. Well, uh, that's all the stuff spoken for. Crew, we need to hire more crew as we did before. Remember, I reverted the save with Piper. So, yeah, Jeb and Valentina have both perished in our space program. Um, so Piper... Piper is no longer here as an option. That's interesting. I guess that was a one-time only deal for Piper. All right. Uh, these aren't exactly names that I find easy to say with the female ones. Lizdrian, Magsy, Meldolin. Meldolin I can say pretty easily. So I'll go with Meldolin. Oh, well, she's a scientist though. All right, I'll keep the scientist. Um, pilots, Maxi, Mag, uh, Mag, no, I'll, I'll go with Samfrin, Sam, no, I, I think it should be Samfrin and it's Sam Finn. no, Shepherd, all right, Shepherd, I can say Shepherd, all right, okay, well, I didn't realize that we still had these Paris ones building, uh, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Scrap them. Yeah. Uh, can we add the existing resources to this? I mean, I know we, we scrapped it, and so we should have the existing resources for these. These are the better ones. Um, doesn't look like it. Maybe if I edit it and then try and build? Let me see. Well, no, it doesn't look like they finish any any parts, really. Yeah, it's still 124 days. Well, cancel edits. I guess we'll pay up for, for the rushing again. So we'll get them both underway. Okay, so 193 days. Time left 162 on the second one. So that should give us enough buffer to complete the contract if we need to go twice for some reason. Okay, uh, we're uh, once again completing improved stage combustion. So, well, I mean, we know what the problem is here. The problem is, once I take it out to the launch pad, what's going to happen? Is it going to shake itself to pieces again? I'll, I'll zip up the save game and, you know, reload and retry if anything like that happens. Okay, here we go. Launch. And we've got to remove Bill. Add Shepherd. And there we go. Okay, what's gonna happen? We've got some shaking. Okay, whatever that was. Well, this install is messed up somehow. We gotta say. Uh, the rocket's tilted a little bit. But Shepard looks alright. Uh, we might have to try an off-plane transfer. I don't know what's going to happen if I... Hold on, let me get rid of persistent rotation here. Put it on Blizzy's toolbar, please. 
So yeah, after I do this, I might have to fix things, but we're at the worst possible location for a lunar transfer, I think. In other words, the, the offlane transfer will be very severe. 56 degrees. So we have to try and time warp, and we'll see what happens. I backed it up because this is obviously a glitch sort, sort of situation, so. Okay, how are the fuels going? Nope, the fuels. Uh, well, he's taking in some food and water. Electric charge is diminishing, but we've got a fuel cell to deal with that if we want to. That's diminishing quite a lot, though. Funny, uh, the problem is the clamps don't provide as much power as they used to, coming out of time warp. No huge shake there. Yeah, launch stability enhancers. If I toggle pump, well, it shouldn't really pump in the oxygen, will it? Okay, well, it looks like we're getting electric charge back. So we almost had another crew disaster right there with the G-force limit thing. So, still waiting for any suggestion about what to do about that, but it looks like we can at least go for this one. Uh, what could be messed up about the install, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, unless there's something wrong with the newest version of Deadly Reentry. But Deadly Reentry is required for RP0, and it also handles the G effects, so... But that shouldn't sh uh, shake, actually physically shake the rocket. So I don't know. Maybe KSC switcher, I've mentioned before, but I don't know enough about these plugins to really opine. Okay, so, uh, well, we'll try it like this. We tried it like this with the test too. It was a little bit shaken up. All right, Shepard. Here we go. Ignition. And launch. Okay, we've cleared the clamps. we go. Well, I'll try and reinstall any mod that was likely to cause the problem. Deadly re-entry, KSC switcher. The KSC switcher hasn't been updated for 1.0.5 though, so that might be a problem. Um, probably Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, just in case. But if there's something wrong with the save file itself, that's going to be in trouble. I can't imagine how, but there are some weird things when it comes to porting a save from one version of KSB to another. With a lot of mods. I mean, with the stock game, there's no problem between 1.0.4 and 1.0.5, I think. But with all the mods, I can't really tell. We'll keep it to 3G's for Shepard. So pretty soon I'll be shutting off two of the engines. Okay, shutting down two engines. Two engines out, four still going, down to 2G's. Worth noting that the capsule does not have any sort of overheating indicator. We certainly had that in the previous version of KSB, but right now the capsule looks fine. Okay, shutting down two more of the engines. We are now only on two engines. Okay, engines out, stage set. And ignition. 
uh, well, I don't know what flight computer is even talking about, but our our Hydrolox engine is lit. Flight computer, flight computer, flight computer. Uh, I mean, it's like, I don't even know where to begin sometimes. Okay, uh, launch escape system jettison. Alright, launch escape system is away. We'll probably have to use about 300 meters per second out of the third stage in order to get to orbit. But that is fine. That is well within our margins and that should leave enough in third stage to transfer to the moon. Now one other annoying thing is the descent mode doesn't seem to work in this capsule. I don't know why, but um, I'll have to take a look at that as well. I've seen how the descent mode is supposed to work. I know how descent mode is supposed to work. It's obviously not working. Um, so that's another thing. We're not uh, getting the benefit of easing off the g-forces using descent mode because even if I toggle it on, it doesn't really do anything. I'll uh, toggle it on again. I believe I toggle it on during the test and we'll try and keep things as consistent as possible. So yeah. But uh, it's supposed to tilt the capsule pretty substantially and it sure wasn't doing that. Our relative inclination to the moon is still 0.25 degrees, so that's very good. So we're hanging out close to apoapsis, and we've still got about 1,300 to 1,400 meters per second left to burn. Everything looks fine, Shepherd looks well, and our relative inclination to the moon should be minimal, though it's lost the targeting again. Every time I click twice in rapid succession on Smart ESS that the target goes off. Alright, stage set. And ignition. Alright, the RL-10 is ignited. For the first time on this mission. Hopefully test flight will not cause us any problems, but well, we have uh, we have possibilities to bring Shepherd back if it does. So right now there shouldn't be any excuse for not getting Shepherd back. Okay, antennas out, solar panels out. Okay, approaching the conclusion of this burn. We already have a good semi-major axis, but we need a little bit more to really get out of the atmosphere here. This should be a pretty circular orbit when we're done. Okay, that's good enough. 268 by 260, let's say. All right. Everything looks good. We've got a little bit less than 3,000 meters per second left in this stage, but we have plenty more in the service module stage, so no problems there. Let me plot for the moon. Okay, so what I've got here is a pass at about 3,110 kilometers above the moon, which should satisfy our contract. And then on the, the Earth side, we've got about 61.6 .6 kilometers, which is close to the 62.5 that we want. This is the plot though, obviously things will change when we actually do the burn. But uh, so free return trajectory as we would like, though a highly inclined return. Not entirely sure that's the best option, but uh, that's what we've got right now. And at least it gets our altitudes in the right places. So, I mean, we could probably fix that with a very minor mid-course adjustment, but I don't see a particular need to, unless it turns out that we end up uh, sending Shepherd into a war zone, but for now that's not the uh, main consideration. Okay, so it looks like a little bit more than a 10 minute burn, we'll need to use some of the service module, but uh, we could probably time warp to uh, T minus 7 minutes and then take it from there. Settling the fuel down. Oh, pretty quickly, very stable there. Ignition. And we'll let the gimbling take us to the node. 
RCS off. Okay, we have had premature engine shutdown, it looks like. Oh, auto saving. All right. Premature engine shutdown, as we've had previously. Engine is very stable right now, so let's. Oh, well, let's throttle up and then reignite. Activating engine. Okay, uh, reignition is good and we are continuing. It looks like it has a maximum burn time. But since it has 10 ignitions, that's sort of pointless, but anyway, we are proceeding, and it should be alright. Still go for the moon. Alright, getting ready for the conclusion of this stage. Shepherd looks fine. Looks like we're going to be using about 200 meters per second of the service module, which is perfectly alright. Alright, staging. Okay, we are unlocking the fuels, oops, not extending panels, unlocking the fuels up here. Very well. Alright, so, checking that the fuel is settled down, yes it is, ignition. Okay. Extending antennae and solar panels. Alright, very good. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Uh, dang it, it's not really showing my approach here. Oh, uh, it's blinking in and out. Okay. Alright, let's shut down there. Take Smart ASS off, SAS on, and use RCS for the remainder. RCS for the remainder. And really, what we need to do is make sure that we've got a good Earth periapsis by the end of this. We don't want the Moon periapsis to get too high, but as long as it's below 5,000 kilometers, we will take it. Okay, uh, so the moon periapsis is about 3,080 kilometers, Earth periapsis 70, and occasionally growing in. Well, anyway, I can't adjust it too much finer than that, so we will take that, and that is our approach. We don't have fuse box up. Looks like we need some more power. We can turn on the fuel cell if we really need to, but where is the sun? The sun's sort of oblique. We should turn our tail to it. Okay, SAS off, RCS on. And maybe if we turn towards our prograde vector a little bit better. Well, it seems like this charge reading agrees with that one. So at least that's a positive thing, so we know what's going on. Let me see about uh, moon. Perhaps this hasn't changed very much. Okay. All right. Well, we can start the fuel cell if we need to, but it looks like we've got four days on this system. So let's let the electric charge deplete a little bit before starting the fuel cell. Okay. Looks like. Uh, Looks like Fusebox is concerned about the situation, or Attack Life Support is concerned about the situation, so let's start up the fuel cells now. Come on. Alright. Activate fuel cell. Now we do have charge replenishment. Okay. Continuing on in. Fusebox does not read the fuel cell. We are now within Lunar SOI, checking our Earth periapsis while we're here. It's at about 204, it looks like. So we will have to adjust, but that should be fine. Shouldn't be a problem adjusting that. We've got plenty of fuel in our service module. Electric charge is still replenishing. And, well, Shepherd can get a close look at the moon. Well, not as close as we would like, but let's try and be safe here. 
Okay, that should be within range of the contract. Yep, 5,000 kilometers. Very good. I think we've already done... I don't know if we transmitted the stuff, though. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that we've done. EVA report. Keep that board. And in the hope that he will survive, I'm not going to transmit it yet. Okay, so he's got some science. Okay, and that is periapsis. And we're headed out again. Okay, here we go. Okay. 204 kilometers it looks like so we'll adjust that Let's see sort of like that right now that's a bit weird oh we head this way or that away hold on because it's polar it's a little bit tough to say okay we're headed in already all right okay so just spring orbital well let me turn it myself okay well here we go again and I can't say I have any good feelings about this let's see just adjusting periapsis right now I'll take it to 62.5 again So I am worried a bit about a skip out. I guess we'll just use the Asterisk engine after all to bring the orbit down. Okay, let's do some checks here. First of all, let's check that the parachutes are properly configured. Yes, they are. So I'm going to arm the parachutes. They are armed. I have this point retrograde with RCS on. Okay, ignition. Okay, too much, too much. Just trying to keep it at 62.5 on the periapsis. I'm a bit worried about what this might do to our trajectory through the atmosphere, but uh, it's difficult to say one way or another. Hopefully it's safer, maybe it's not. Let's get it pretty darn precise. Alright, as long as it's below 62.5 it's fine by me. Alright, so we're going to kick the service module off now. And we'll do it safely, which means turning normal. Gonna have fine controls on now, so we don't use too much of the fuel from up here. I'm gonna unlock everything now. We used some HTP accidentally earlier on. Okay, off goes the service module. And now I want it to orient us retrograde. I think I had the scent mode on, so I'm gonna have the scent mode on again. I wonder which would be lighter on the RCS usage, SAS or Smart ASS. Well, I'm just gonna have SAS it doesn't look like there's any SAS options over here. I wonder why. Pilot can't be that bad, can he? I'm more or less controlling this manually. Maybe I shouldn't do that for consistency's sake. Why is it 2.346 tons, by the way? There's no way it should be that heavy. I don't get this. Uh, th that It wasn't that much hydrazine. 
It's not supposed to be 2.34 tons. This isn't right. I, uh, unless the heat shield is really that heavy, maybe? I don't think so. Well, anyway, we're in the thick of it now. Ablating is happening at a prodigious, prodigious rate. Hydrazine is being used, but we are on fine controls. And it's not maxing out the pitch yet, thankfully. Ideal situation again is coasting a bit at around 62 kilometers. Okay, we're going back up again. I really don't want to have to go around, so I'd like to see that orbital period drop down and apoapsis, of course, go below 130 kilometers. Soon. Soon would be nice. Still don't get where we get that mass from. Probe core is like 0.1 tons, maybe. RCS thrusters should be tiny. The parachutes are small ones. Well, it doesn't look like we got as low as I would like. Apoapsis is still pretty high. And it looks like we're going around even though the test capsule did not go around. So that's a bit frustrating. I don't know why there should be a difference. We, if anything, we pulled our apoapsis lower with the service module than we did before. We hit the same periapsis. We can't be any lighter. We should have gotten just the same drag. So why are we going up again? Yeah, I don't understand. Let me have it hold retrograde here. I'm gonna need that hydro. Uh, I'm gonna lock the hydrazine tank though, because I'm gonna need that to uh, make sure that we can adjust the periapsis once we get to apoapsis. The HDP is not quite as critical at this point. You're gonna have to examine the capsule in the VAB. I'm pretty sure I didn't have it at 2.25 because the whole capsule plus the service module is five tons. Can't, the service module can't be that light. It carries most of the food, carries a tank for the waste wastewater. Now we do have some extra carbon dioxide waste and wastewater in here. Really I should have removed those tanks and make sure or made them smaller so that all that stuff went into the service module. Maybe the fact that we're carrying all that makes it heavier? Seems unlikely though. Okay, well, we're at 100 kilometers. I don't think we need the RCS going still, do we? Still seems to be... Oh, it seems to be deviating all right. What the heck? Hmm. Wait, let me turn that off. It's going to start deviating. Yeah, you can see it's sort of moving away from... That's interesting. That does not bode well. I should make it clear that I'm not entirely saying that people are wrong about not having the stuff at the top. It's just that I think I ought to be able to have the stuff at the top. And I'm sort of rebelling against the idea that uh, I'm being forced to just have a capsule without anything on the top. Especially the the controller. The, the probe core that's that's a thing that I really need because after all how can we test the capsules properly if we don't have a probe core on how can we test them uncrewed I mean there are ways but it's not as rigorous and so you expect to at least have a probe core up there to test it uncrewed but uh, yeah in general I'd, I'd like to have other things up there too like the fuel and the food well this isn't actually so much fuel there's a little bit of fuel here but food, water, and oxygen. Most of the fuel is actually in here. Or was. Hmm. I should have put more fuel in here, actually. I used to have a lot of hydrazine in there. Anyway, we're in space now. Let's go up to Apoapsis and take care of business there. Okay, well, we're a few minutes away from Apoapsis. We happen to be 
close to the prograde marker right now. It has been rolling around because we've got persistent rotation. I didn't have SAS on or Smart ASS. Smart ASS wouldn't hold it. But since we are now close to the prograde marker, I decided to drop out of time warp so that we can make our adjustment. Okay, let me have SAS hold that. Unlock Hydrazine and Fullard. I think since we're now pretty, pretty low, I'll aim for like 70 kilometers. Technically, we know this pod can deal with 62.5, but there's no reason that Shepherd has to deal with higher G-forces if we can help it. Well, let's split the difference. 67.5, how about that? Well, it's not quite splitting the difference. But anyway, uh, this should leave us pretty close to retrograde on the periapsis side, so I'll just keep this, this orientation here. I'm not taking any chances. Um, so, it'll be on fine controls, but... Well... We saw that SAS could hold it last time, so I'm going to let the SAS do the job this time as well. Because Smart ASS, I think, seems to use more through the atmosphere. Hey, okay, there is the atmosphere. I'm going to recycle SAS to make sure it's holding this spot. Uh, hatch side is down. Let me make sure we roll as close to flat as possible. But descent mode does not seem to do anything, so this is the part where it would have been helpful with the high G-forces, but nope, descent mode does not seem to do anything, which again suggests that something is misconfigured with this capsule, even if the whole idea that you're not supposed to put anything on top of it would be correct. Um, even disregarding that, obviously the capsule is misconfigured because descent mode isn't working. No apparent heating effects yet. Some ablation. G-forces are still mild at this point, but periapsis has gone down. We are not uh, yet at very definitively suborbital speeds. You know, I mean, 7,300 meters per second or less. Even though we are obviously suborbital. Not a lot of noise yet. Up, oh, we're getting some flame effects now. We're running out of hydrazine for the thrusters at the top. Plenty of HTP left. Okay, above two G's now. We are hoping that the G-forces don't go too high for Shepherd. Past 3 G's, 55 kilometers, and descending, 54. Uh, some weird shaking here. 6 G's. Well, there's a little bit more shaking than I would have expected just visually. Well, 7 G's. It's gonna be pretty bad. Let's just hope it doesn't go into the danger zone. I think it has peaked, and we're looking at 8 G's there. Well... Well, let me not say anything, just in case something unexpected happens. I do think it is safe at this point to turn off the RCS. You know, considering there's no wind here on, on Earth in Realism Overhaul, and the atmosphere is pretty darn thick, I guess that's some island there, um, makes me wonder why it's rocking back and forth at all. 
right? Why is it going back and forth? Turbulence isn't actually a thing, right? There isn't any modeling of turbulence in this atmosphere. Oh, it's flipping over. See, that's a little bit weird. But, I mean, I guess it proves everybody's point, right? That this is totally, totally wrong. Except, still, it probably shouldn't be flipping over at that point either. Anyway, here are the parachutes. Anyway, it's safe to say I don't feel all that great about this sort of system. And, again, I'm not saying people who think that this, this is a problem are wrong. It's just that I wanted this to be like this. And I didn't see anything... It, I didn't see any indication that would suggest that it was going to totally fail on me as a result of putting something on there like that. Especially since real capsules have had that in the past. Of course, if I didn't have the uh, RCS system that I have here, and we skipped out of the atmosphere as we did, uh, we would be have been pretty much out of luck trying to use just the HTP inside the pod itself in order to correct our periapsis to make a smooth re-entry. We would have had a uh, very low periapsis, and then we would have been in trouble. Okay, parachutes are open. And we're getting closer to fulfilling that contract. Only, wow, 1.6 meters per second? Alright, I'll, I'll probably stop recording. Uh, it's going to take a while to get down there. You know, considering how much the parachutes have done to slow us down, maybe, maybe they're heavy? Or a lot heavier than I thought they were? I mean, they seem so small. I mean, on the capsule. But then again, they're like, they're like that. And there are four of them. Okay, here we go. Getting close to the surface of the water. Off of physical time warp now. And splash down, well, Not much of a splash, is it? Recover a vessel. Okay, so we've done it. We earned uh, 27 science. We got the capsule back, even though it was really far away. Shepard gained five experience, amazingly enough. Uh, what? I thought we would get more than, was it only 500,000 or so? Let me see. Uh, oh, 625,000. Okay. Well, well, we made it. Finally, that took a long time, but with significant, significant anomalies, let's call them. Uh, the fact that on the launch pad it was trying to shake itself apart. The fact that, uh, uh, going back up on, first of all, we skipped out of the atmosphere, which we weren't supposed to do based on the test. And then, of course, on the way up, there was obvious uh, attempts by it to flip around. So that's not right. I mean, it, it was definitely wiggling in a bad way without RCS control. So that is not good. Let me take a look at the mass again because I couldn't quite believe the mass was that heavy. So the parachutes. Wow. Wow. I did not realize. Okay, folks. So this has been my problem. I didn't realize that the parachutes were 0.9 tons. I thought the main mass on top here... The main mass on top here I thought was the tank. Food, water, and oxygen, and hydrazine. I thought that was the mass. I didn't realize these... How did they... They weren't supposed to be 0.9 tons, were they? No. Mm -hmm. Well, it says 0.22 here. Then that's... You know, times four is 0.9 ish. 0.88. But, hmm. Wow. Well, definitely we need fewer of those. So that was my problem. But technically, that's where the parachutes go. But, you know, 
here's the thing in in old in old versions this wouldn't be enough parachutes and there isn't any smaller size this is the smallest size it gets and there's two of them here okay so that was a mistake in my calculations yeah I did not expect the parachutes to be that bad alright well we have some work to do with this system I need a break from trying crude missions so probably the next thing I'm gonna do is pick up a probe mission and yeah we'll probably be building a new rocket thanks to the new science we've unlocked we've got this science day from space around Mars thing to do that's in four years but I think we can go ahead with that we should also land something on the moon now that no on. alright so we'll add that alarm and now that we've cleared this mission we can proceed with other things but there's a sure dodgy way of clearing mission and even if we do go ahead with the probe missions we've still got the issue on the launch pad with the thing shaking itself to pieces so I'll try and figure that out but alright at least we did this much with the Paris rocket and on this note I'll say thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time